My name is John Cornyn, and I'm running for re-election to the United States Senate from Texas. I'm MJ Hagar, and I'm running for the U.S. Senate here in Texas. It's easy to criticize, and I, you know, occasionally do it myself, but I tend to try to be focused on what needs to be done and trying to get it done. I'm not satisfied at all with our handling of the pandemic. I don't know many Texans that are. Most of us are pretty good at dealing with assessing risk and figuring out how to manage it, but it's been the uncertainty that I think has been such a challenge for everybody. And I don't see any effective crisis management. I don't see any rubrics or milestones or data. I see a lot of politics. Well, I think we've learned how to live with the virus, which is what we're gonna have to do for the foreseeable future until we get a vaccine. The first big mistake was downplaying it and acting like it wasn't a big deal. And John Cornyn is certainly guilty of that. We certainly thrown a lot of resources at it. If you told me six months ago, I would have uh, voted for $3 trillion worth of spending. I would not have believed you. We need to address the immediate concerns with access to testing and contact tracing. Um, but we also need to address the economic situation and make sure that whatever leaders we elect are in a position to make sure that our economy recovers for regular working people like us. This naive idea that we simply are going to defund the police rather than to train the police and defend them when they are doing a job that frankly is indispensable um, is not the way to go. We make sure that there isn't punitive defunding. Um, I'm not for that. Um, what I am for is working with communities to figure out where those resources need to go to best serve the communities. Uh, who are you going to call? if somebody's breaking into your house. There is always going to be a need for someone to be on the other end of the line when we're in distress. We have had a long history, sadly, from the very beginning of our country of uh, racial injustice, and we've gotten better, but we obviously have a lot of work to do. We need investment in communities to make sure that every American feels like they can pick up that phone and call for help. If any state can do something, Texas can do it better. So I don't understand why 34 states have been able to figure this out and our elected officials haven't. Any Texan who wants to vote safely can do so under existing law. If you're over 65 or you're disabled, you, you can vote by mail. So when I hear people trying to fight against vote by mail, it tells me they're trying to keep us from voting. I'm a little bit of a stickler for the law. And uh, right now, that's Texas law, what I described to you. So if, if we want to change it for the future, that's something we ought to talk about. I make decisions based on evidence, science, facts, and data. And there is no evidence that vote by mail leads to fraud. So that's why I support it. It's not so much the mail that I'm worried about. It's the voter rolls that uh, have not kept up with uh, people moving out of town, people passing away and the like. And I just think we don't need any additional chaos or uncertainty, particularly during the middle of this pandemic. When they are counting on fear to keep us from the polls and keep us from being able to exercise our right to vote, then it's because they have a fear of being held accountable for their failures. Congress just appropriated another $10 billion in loans to the post office. So this suggestion that somehow the post office is going to be defunded or it's been sabotaged, I just have not seen that. We're hearing from postal workers that machines have been broken down and parts have been destroyed, and they they are trying to walk back some of the changes and are unable to because of that. So I support the post office. Uh, what I do believe we could do better is to make it more efficient. If I have seen politicians sabotage organizations because they want to privatize them, because they have a profit-driven motive. I mean, the days of just snail mail alone are long gone. And so I'd like to see the post office step up and uh, stay up to speed with what else is happening in, in the world. Oh, I can't wait to work with Ted Cruz. I think it's going to be a blast. Ted and I are sort of the yin and yang of uh, the Texas delegation. I think that we're both strong personalities. We're going to, we're both, we're both going to fight for our values. Ted's personality and mine are a little different. Um, I'm going to be fighting for regular working Texans, and if that's what Ted Cruz wants to do, then we're going to get along great. I think what counts is we are committed to trying to get things um, done for Texas. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Since you'll be representing Texas, we didn't know if we could do a quick lightning round of Texas trivia. Okay. Oh, great. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which Texas city calls itself the spinach capital of the world and even features a Popeye statue? I know the sweet potato capital of the world. Um, I believe that's Crystal City. Correct. 
Is that, oh, whew. Okay, I learned something. Adopted in 03, what's the state snack of Texas? I think that would have to be beef jerky from Bucky's. <laughs> Fajitas? I don't know. Tortilla what? chips and salsa. Okay, well, I could go with that. What classic Texas hot sauce is famously not made in New York City? Pace. Yeah, Pace Picante. Oh, that's uh, Pace Picante sauce. New York City! And finally, what is the, the mascot of the state of Texas? I bleed burnt orange, so I don't care what it is. It's Bevo to me. <laughs> I can't recall. Armadillo. Oh. Armadillo. Well, that makes perfect sense. One of my son's favorite animals. That reminds me of a Robert O'Keen song. Remember that song about the armadillo? Yes, I'm making lots of dough. The armadillo. Oh, the armadillo. Oh.